So why SPAC and why now? Hi, Emily. Thanks for having me on today. Um, well, as you mentioned in your intro, uh, quantum computing is an entirely new paradigm for computing. And as with many technologies, it requires a significant investment to bring them to market. Um, and becoming a public company gives us access to capital and resources to make quantum a reality. So uh, mainstream quantum computing though, how close is that really? We heard from the CEO of IBM earlier. He's really bullish on it. He said three to five years. I spoke to another CEO who's in a position to know who says it is a long ways off. Yep. Um, <clears throat> well, first as I would say that um, different technologies have different horizons. Some of them, um, you know, like ours, we also think is in the three to five years. But I think there's other technologies in quantum which are still 30 years away. Um, I do think that this is um, the companies that make the devices are probably, you know, the um, uh, have the advantage point in terms of being able to predict when they think they can bring a product to market. So how do you believe quantum computing will change our lives as we know it and tackle real world problems? Like what will be different possible as a result? Um, well, you know, uh, quantum computing, many people expect that quantum computers will be able to solve many of mankind's kind of grand challenges. Everything from uh, direct carbon capture to new drug discovery, new batteries, um, solving strong AI, uh, improving machine learning. It's, since we're talking about, um, you know, just a much bigger computer, it's kind of hard to say where it won't be used. Um, and I do think it's kind of an interesting question. If you were to go back to Intel and ask them in the 1970s, what did they think those little microprocessors were going to be used for? The answer back then was it was going to make a great calculator. And they couldn't really foresee the internet or, or you know, cell phones happening. I think we're in that same place today for quantum. Um, you know, where there's a bunch of things that we know about today that we use classical computers for. But I bet you 20 years from now, we'll look back at this and people will look at my answer and go out and go, wow, you couldn't have imagined X, Y, and Z. And so we're exactly the same place kind of for quantum as we were in the 1970s. You mentioned carbon capture, and I know Bill Gates' Breakthrough Energy is one of your investors. You also worked at Amazon as the director of engineering for Prime for many years. And I'm curious, how could quantum computing revolutionize a company like Amazon? Well, um, you know, the so quantum computing is good at solving optimization problems with a cost function. Um, and so uh, it turns out many business problems can be converted into an optimization problem. So as an example, what is the optimal route to deliver a package to a consumer? Um, that's something that logistics companies are extremely interested in. Because if you can just shave off a mile or two off of a driver's daily delivery route, you can save a great deal of money. So for somebody like Amazon on the amazon.com side, not the AWS side, you know, they should have a lot of interest in the logistics applications for quantum. Um, and then, of course, you mentioned Bill Gates. There, it's things like direct carbon capture and better batteries, um, and even you know chemical applications. It turns out that uh, in the production of fertilizer is one of the most polluting industries on the planet. It accounts for about one percent of all the carbon emissions. But bacteria know how to do it in soils without any extra energy. So we just don't have a, a classical computer that can do that modeling, but with a quantum computer, we'll be able to do it. We can unlock the secrets of how nature does it without polluting the environment. So it's these kinds of things that we think quantum computers are going to be good for. Um, not to get too deep, but do you think that quantum will get us closer to the singularity where computers won't just be able to process the things we want to, but will actually be able to understand well, what we're asking so them first, to do? So, um, so, you know, first, before I started at Amazon, I worked with Ray Kurzweil for seven years. So um, I'm very familiar with, with Ray and the singularity, and he's a good friend. Uh, the, the short answer is yes, actually, 
Um, uh, myself, I'm extremely interested in strong AI. And I think there's uh, good reason to believe that a quantum computer will be able to unlock that as well. Um, so I'm, I'm particularly hopeful there. That's a little speculative today, but I think in the next couple of years, you'll start to see um, that quantum computing can help there as well. 